is uh, Ricardo Favela, and uh, I was born in Kingsburg, which is down in the San Joaquin Valley. And I spent most of my uh, early youth with my parents going uh, from labor camp to labor camp uh, until we finally, my mother finally decided we were going to settle down, and we settled down in a little town called, called Dinuba because we were there in time for the great picking. So I was very much involved with the art. Ever since I was Chavalito, I've always dealt with art, so I, I had a knack for it. And so I continued in that vein, and uh, I went to school here at uh, California State University, and I completed my BA in 71. And then in, I left school, even though I, I entered the master's program, but I left early because uh, we started the Centro de Artistas Chicanos. Uh, it was there in 1969 that I ran into Esteban and Jose, Esteban Villa and Jose Montoya. I was probably their first student that they had, and uh, well, once uh, I hooked up with them, that was it, man. It was a runaway train because it was, seemed like that's what all that was all that I was waiting for, was for somebody to come uh, to pick up uh, to pick up the momentum that I had lost. While I was in school, it was real difficult because I was dealing with uh, with uh, uh, art forms that were very foreign to me. And so I was always trying to do the, the Western European art forms, and I got versed in it, and I took art history courses and things, but there was always something lacking. And I couldn't put my finger on it until I ran into Esteban and Jose. And it was just very simple. It was just my Chicano heart wanting to do Chicano art. And uh, so that keeps in, in continuance the philosophies that we have as trying to get to as many you know, of our people as we can. So that's why the mural art, the classes, and uh, the poster art have been a very, very important and integral part in the beginning. Now we've expanded it into theater, to drama, into we now have artists and residence programs here from the California Arts Councils. And uh, that philosophy of getting the art to the people is, uh, has been the one that I think has really made what the Centro is really about. It's a, it's a nonprofit organization. We, were, uh, we received our status of nonprofit uh, status in 1972. And uh, we've been the Centro de Artistas since then that houses the Royal Chicano Air Force, which is the organization that we started out with as an artist. It started out as the Rebel Chicano Artist Front, but uh, we got so much flack behind, you know, you know what? What's this? The Royal Canadian Air Force that we got? We felt slighted, and we said, "Well, the Chicanos can have an Air Force too." RCAF's mission is to provide a center where artists could come together and exchange ideas, provide mutual support, and offer cultural and educational programs to the Chicano community. The RCAF, originally formed to foster support for Cesar Chavez and the labor organizing movement of the United Farm Workers. Jose Montoya and Esteban Villa, art professors at Sacramento State, founded the RCAF in 1969, together with their students Juanishi Villarosco, Ricardo Favela, and Rudy Cuellar. Playing up their Air Force identity, the RCAF gained a well-deserved reputation for outlandish humor and community activism. They created murals in public spaces throughout California that portrayed the Mexican-American struggle for dignity and rights in vivid, vibrant colors. RCAF also became a springboard for educational initiatives such as Barrio Art Program and remains a vibrant force in the Sacramento arts community today. But it was the silkscreen posters of the RCAF that had the most profound impact. To us, the silkscreen was not only art, it was something that you could produce multiples and you could incorporate lettering screening process. That's one of the things that uh, Cesar Chavez and the, and the union found so useful and effective about who we were is that we could load a silk screen operation into a Volkswagen bus and go out to the fields and pass out fresh materials. Just all over, wherever the union was, there's, you'll find RCAS posters. Used to educate, agitate, and organize, these posters played a key role in helping to raise wages and improve the working conditions of migrant workers. They were also instrumental in helping to establish the Chicano arts movement of the 1970s and 80s.
I think he was one of the first professors that kind of broke that barrier between, you know, between student and teacher. You know, one of the first professors that said, hey, you know what, you're welcome at my office anytime. And I don't know, it's just something that Favela, you know, really gave me was he, you know, he really made me feel like my artwork was, you know, meant something. And I was just blown away because I've never experienced any, anything like that in my life. He wouldn't treat you like a student. He treated you like a peer. And plus, he, got, he, he was so, he was so funny. I mean, I, I, everybody's saying it, but yeah, he was, he, there's stuff in my head that goes on all the time with his voice in it. Him going like, uh, him saying, uh, never mind. <laughs> always, he always say that. Or he goes, he had many monies. And, uh, so many weird things that he would say that were so like, his idiosyncrasies uh, just stay with me. It, it, it's crazy how much, and you know, and he's been gone for a long time. You know, it's, it's crazy how, how, how long he's been gone, but his impact is just, it's never gonna go away. They just, just thinking like how beautiful it was to, um, you know, during that, that time, right? Like during the, that time frame as brown kids to have, Brown kids who are creative and into the arts, whose parents, you know, are immigrants or came here, you know, to work in the field, you know, and in SAC, to have someone encourage that creative piece, because like that, ain't, you know, we didn't get that in our families. Like, no, you know, the arts, like that's a luxury. Like, you know, vete a trabajar. Like, no andes con pendejadas, you know, like go, like we didn't get no support for being a creative. And I don't know, like maybe they saw that, you know, they felt bad for us or like knew what that was like. But, you know, it was so, so beautiful to have people notice your creative spirit and to encourage it. It was like that with his students, right? He made you, the amazing thing about dad is he made you feel seen and he made you feel heard. I think sometimes it's, for me as his, as his daughter, it's easy to forget that, you know, dad was a classically trained artist. He got his master's in fine arts and um, he did sculpture, he, he painted, he drew constantly. And one of the things that I, re that I as an adult, I, and I remember just simply a moment where I, I began to realize the depth of knowledge and wisdom that he had. He was so intelligent, like he was, so, you know, we, we knew we were like in the presence of geniuses and um, but then they were just like us, like they were like, you know, our families. And I think that's what was so impactful for us that it's like, it really did break down that myth of intellectualism being white. And it was like, you're, you're seeing it in front of you. You're seeing these incredible artists. You're seeing these intellectuals. You're hearing these conversations, right? Cause we were in Washington Neighborhood Center. We were still, you know, we're still kids. And I'm, you know, at the time I was a high school dropout struggling through community college and I'm getting a, eavesdrop on all these you know conversations while I'm running around you know cleaning up the Washington Neighborhood Center or you know trying to come up with programs I think the beauty of it was like for us it was like it was a first time seeing you didn't have to give one thing up for another like you didn't have to be white to be an intellectual you didn't have to be this certain thing to be a fine artist like you didn't have to give one thing up for another uh, that excellence that academic excellence is perceived as whiteness and uh, nothing could be further from the truth that, that, God, there was no more a heady intellectual group of people than when you walked in on a Wednesday night to a RCF meeting. What Ricardo Favela was doing was fine art. And it was an advancement of the articulation of our Chicanismo, like with an economic you know, gesture. We have to carry that water uh and we can't wait for a thank you or expect one we just have to do it really right <laughs> because of favela there is this large collection of posters or RCA, rca posters because he always he was archivist he collected everything from the rcaf and he collected everything from us you know whenever we ran a poster he always wanted like one or two copies you know and because of him i mean saxe has a really nice collection uh san jose has a really nice collection and before that, you know, I know he gave some to uh, Stanford, and, like he got posters all over the place. So, uh, you know, he he showed us to to be, to archive our work, to take care of our work, and always to keep a, a, at least one copy because you never know what's going to happen. 
and we had a you know we had a very nurturing place to be able to do that like a supportive nurturing place to just be able to dream as people of color you you can't you can't be around that and not not be impacted by it and influenced by it you know and um and just you know just really reflecting like what a blessing and i i can only hope that for for students and young people that we that we get to work with that we we leave that kind of that legacy of of love and support and seeing you know helping helping our culture push forward you know like if we think about the 500 plus years of the little bit of the shit that didn't get burned what people had to do it for us to still have it and hold on to it that's what we're doing we're just like carrying that little bit you know we still got that flame give it to the next group so that it continues on he was such a a, a beautiful man you know and, and i i i miss him dearly you know that's something that he, that he hated he even had this this little like uh like diagram in a, you know what i'm saying to the right you have like latino hispanic that the most widest like Euro, eurocentric labels and to the left yeah like you know indigena chicano and, and everything that wasn't nice to us and i always i always like think of that you know i i want to live my life like that and I, i think that i have i have been living my life like that since 1998 since i met him you know i'm going to be a chicano till i drop just like him just like Jose Montoya and all this with that 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 made an impact uh, on on chicanismo and i will never deny that label and i'm always going to be working towards my community because that's something that that he showed me and for that i'm forever grateful you know ricardo favela presente con safos y que